Hi again people, um, we're just going to look at some Bible prophecy among some other things just now. Let's start with Daniel 11 verse 30, which talks about the king of the north um, having indignation against the holy covenant. Um, and it says here, he shall even return and have intelligence with them that forsake the holy covenant. So certainly if you look at the past two world wars, um, the king of the north and king of the south, um, perhaps just like at around the time of Daniel um, in chapter 8 there was certain wars of the kings of the old, the old empires of Grecia, Medo-Persia, Babylon um, so being part of the home nations as it were Britain and America um, it seems to have a Christian heritage and the kings and queens have kept that heritage going since the Reformation but up until the past few de decades um, Prince Charles has reached out to many many different religions and even in one speech said that he is the def he will be the defender of faiths rather than the faith the faith obviously coming from the reformists in the King James Version in the 17th century but certainly when we look at uh, British history a little bit I um, don't know if anyone knows that the, the, the flag for Wales is the dragon now that dragon does come from ancient Roman tradition um, when the Romans occupied Britain in, in the early part of the last millennia and they had shields and um, armour with uh, serpents on, probably flags as well with serpents um, generally that was the army's emblem from Rome and still today um, we see the Vatican crest is a dragon you know serpents and dragons are generally sort of referred to in the same family, obviously serpents are snakes, we know that that was the curse that um, Satan got back in back in the Garden of Eden so perhaps he once was uh, another kind of being um, like a dragon or, or, or something similar to that so we know right from the first chapter of Genesis unto the book of Revelation um, a red dragon is spoken of and Yes, Wales is one of these nations that have that on their flag. Another one, of course, is China. So I wonder how we can put these prophecies together um, about the King of the North and the King of the South. Well, part of the power that the King of the North has is over Babylon, because the King of the North's power stretched from the ancient empire of Babylon at the time of Daniel. But as the prophecies and the prophets such as Jeremiah and Isaiah write in the end times, there will be an end time Babylon and there are well over 50 um, prophecies probably a lot more than that that indicate that America could only be the nation that fits into these end time prophecies but then there's only been one that's basically broken um, that's, that's basically had indignation and is for actively forsaking the Holy Covenant just now um, you know publicly in speeches and in his dress and his, his manner very much for the one world, new, new world order, one world government, and that is Prince Charles of but Wales. But if I may say so, to join the Hindu community on the tremendously auspicious occasion of Diwali uh, and to celebrate with you uh, this most wonderful festival of lights is indeed a great privilege for both of us. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this quiet and industrious approach to life is reflected in your remarkable achievements in education, uh, in business, the professions, and so many other fields. No presidents have done that in America, um, publicly at least. And there's also ancient tales of George and the Dragon. Um, George is one of the kings, kings of in England that were, were said to have slain a dragon. Um, it was probably just myth. But then again, you never know, there could be little baby dragons, I don't know, running around. <laughs> it seems a little bit far-fetched to me because when we read the book of Job, chapter 41, it describes Leviathan. And Leviathan is an absolutely massive, huge um, kind, of, kind of dragon. Verse 29, darts are counted as stubble, he laughs at the shaking of a spear. And King George was meant to kill the dragon with a spear, so it's, it seems a little bit far-fetched to me, of course, unless this uh, leviathan has had little children. 
Um, it seems that this Leviathan dwells in the sea, literally in the sea. Um, I've heard prophetic scholars talk about the dragon just being a, a spiritual aspect of Satan. His demons are certainly able to um, possess people. Fallen angels are able to obviously influence um, a great number of people and do false signs and wonders. And I've heard it said that Satan the devil can even possess entire nations, which uh, perhaps happened to Germany during the Second World War when Hitler came to power. It just seemed that anything Hitler said and did, um, people were just prepared to follow him, even, it, even if it went against the Bible, if it went against common sense. Um, they would just follow him, um, whatever he said, which is quite scary because um, certainly the Father, the Creator, gave man intellect and a mind to use and to think. And as Paul the Apostle writes, to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. So it's a thing that happens in a relationship with the Father. I think all the saints fall at some point. Uh, it's also written in Proverbs, a righteous man will fall seven times and get up seven times. It is also said by Yahshua, how many times um, do you forgive a man if he asks for forgiveness? I think the main point is if he asks for forgiveness, if he does an evil deed against you and doesn't ask for forgiveness, then, then that sin is on his head. How can you forgive him? But if he comes before you in repentance and asks for forgiveness, Messiah said, well, you can forgive a man seven, seven times seven, and that's just in a single day. <laughs> so this is the amount of compassion obviously in our walk, you know, probably we can sin um, in, a, in, in a number of occasions during a day if we ignore the Lord's voice or if we are met with a situation that we haven't spoke God's word and we could have spoken it. Well, I think that's also counting the sin. It's a very hard thing to look at, but um, certainly when we're faced with demons or we're faced with anything in Satan's realm, in Satan's kingdom, then we must fight against it with the word of God. And Yahweh Elohim will always prepare us with his word, but at the same time, Satan will always try and weaken us um, to be led into temptation and go against the will of the Father. So it is an ongoing relationship for the saints. I just wonder today, you know, um, just as in Nazi Germany, it seems to be a dumbing down of the population. Um, you know, as people say, it doesn't matter what you eat. Well, this is the, the same lie that the, the devil gave to Eve. Um, that you can eat from the tree of knowledge and good and evil and it won't harm you. Um, you know, today it's well, you can drink fluorinated water and it won't harm you. Um, you, you can have uh, unclean foods that are not uh, prescribed um, by Yahweh, by the Father for us to eat. And some people even go to the extreme that they don't eat any meats at all. And Paul even describes that, that you're not meant to judge these things, just make sure that people aren't offended. But there are also spiritual meats that... Uh, the Father wants us to have, but is largely thrown out by uh, the hypocritical congregations that like to uh, tuck into a nice uh, big leg of pork, and they'll just throw out the meaty stuff that Yahweh brings through his apostles and prophets, um, and evangelists, and teachers, and even pastors. I think I mentioned the five-fold ministry there. I'll give you an example. It's like uh, if you're an engineer and one of your parts need replaced, and you phone the company and you actually name the wrong part and they send it um, and you, you, you kind of re are able to replace it but the machine doesn't work the same well it's like that with sin if you can imagine that uh, this universe has been created by the Father and everything within this universe has a purpose some things can be eaten, some things can't some days are holy, some days aren't and there's certain ways that we, we are to discern uh, all these things and it's according to his word but if you name even just one of those things um, by the wrong, let's say, by the name of another god, then it actually corrupts your nature, it actually influences your nature, and whatever that demon or whatever it is uh, you have begun to let into your daily or weekly life, then it will affect you. And that's why we are called by the Father to come out of the world. And yet when we come out of the world, when we accept Yahshua as our Messiah, Jesus the Christ, Yahshua as his true name, then what happens? We go to a church and we find ourselves more in the world than we were before. Because many of these churches are far more in the world than even many of these pagan religions are today. So it's equally as easy for a Hindu and a so-called Christian to join the New World Order 
Whereas the Father Yahweh just tells us that we must be born again, regardless of our colour or race, is his holy word. Some people call it the Tanakh, which is the Law and the Prophets, or the Torah, which is the Law itself, but it is the writer of these books that is the source of the wisdom, and it's Yahshua the Messiah that wrote all these books and gave them to Moses, not Moses himself. So he's the one that deserves the glory for every part of the word of the Father, the Bible. But it certainly depends on you um, what God or gods actually sit on the throne of your heart. And now we're sort of drawing closer to the whole uh, issue of why the Father sent his Son. Um, because we need to be saved from the inside and cleansed from the inside so that no sin is in our bodies and this is what unleavened bread is about but I'd like to think about as well that the nation of Scotland um, enthroned its king um, it's the only nation in Britain that has that privilege really remember its roots really think about anyone um, that's going to sit on the throne of this nation